Well, hello and welcome to somewhere that's not actually the studio. This is a local park, but somewhere I like to come and sketch. There's some smashing buildings and lots of lovely architecture. In fact, strolling around here, I think I've discovered our next painting challenge. Just over my shoulder. Well, here I am, finally back in the studio, but six months later. Now, I planned to use that little bit of footage there all the way back in June this year. So what happened? Well, like the rest of us, life, I'm afraid, tends to take over. And our time is just taken up with so many other things. There's so many other distractions and things that we must do first that we run out of time just to enjoy things like painting. So I thought today I would just do some simple oil sketches for you. So the idea is that we're going to just do some very quick, short, easy little paintings that just capture some ideas that we can come back to later on. Now, outside it's blowing a gale. It's November now. Um, and I actually went back to that little gateway yesterday. It was a much nicer day then, but I've retreated back indoors to have a go at these sketches. Now, just a quick look at what I'm doing here. These are, if you haven't seen these before, these are my little paper DIY canvases. I, I actually use this stuff, and this is a decorator's uh, lining paper. Nothing, nothing fancy at all. You can buy this on a roll for just a few pounds or a few dollars in, in wherever you are. And I simply cover some old canvases. These are my, my old practice canvases. And I just tape it to the front, a little bit of masking tape. This, is, this isn't even one whole piece, I, I stuck them together. But I use these to practice on. And I can cover these with acrylic to make them waterproof or oil proof. And that's important, we don't want the, the oil sinking in. But as you see, I've got two or three little canvases and I use all my little off cuts up. This will be perfect for just doing some practice work on. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a couple of quick, short little demonstration, demonstration sketches, if you will, just of some ideas for maybe a future painting. So if you don't know, I'm going to tell you. Sit back and relax. Take just a little break from life and watch me practice on canvas, or rather paper. Happy painting, people. I hope I got all that right. Bit of a blur. <laughs> Before I can use my paper canvases, I need to give it a coat of this buff titanium white acrylic, but you use whatever acrylic you have. I use a small roller and I usually give them a couple of coats. Make sure you allow it to dry completely before you use it for oil painting. Here you see I've selected a photograph to work from as a reference. and I'm using some graphite paper held onto the canvas with a bulldog clip. An A4 sheet works very well with this size canvas. I think it's a 12 by nine. It fits almost perfectly. As you can see, what I'm doing is transferring a very basic outline of the doorway. I do this because it saves a lot of time. The very thing we're short of. But one thing is I don't want it too dark. So I'm gonna take an eraser and just rub off some of the graphite. It should be just visible. Here's my palette, and as you can see, I've put out very small amounts of paint for this little sketch. I don't know if I'm going to need black, but I've put out what I think I'm going to need. I'll combine some of these together to make nice oranges and grey shadow tones. I'm also using just some very cheap brushes. These are just synthetics. I may not actually need them all in the end. I'm also using a little drop of odorless thinness with my paint. I'm going to be doing this much more of a wash than a really heavy painting. So the first step is just to moisten one of my brushes, the slightly larger flat brush. And I'm going to go into some bright red and some Indian yellow to make a sort of a rough pinkish tone, a bit of an orange tint to it. This is really for my brickwork. I might also add a tiny drop of dark sienna just to add an extra tint of colour. Now let's just start by loosely blocking in the area of the brickwork. Remember, this is a sketch, so I'm not looking for detail here. I'm just looking for large blocks of colour. Work quickly. Don't spend too long fussing over details. They're not necessary at this stage. We're just looking to get the rough shape on the canvas. 
Now I'm going to darken this color slightly. I'm going to put in some of the bigger features. There's a nice block of really bright orangey red bricks here. So let's just block those in again. No detail here, just a block of color. There we are. And maybe I'll look around the rest of the reference photograph and I see there's a few nice dark orangey bricks up here at the top as well. A couple of swipes of the brush is all it takes. I've added a few more touches of colour around the canvas. I'll put some nice bars across here to indicate where that brickwork goes to the right of the doorway. A really lovely way of adding just a touch of detail is to use the point of the palette knife and just to scratch through that paint. Now you know why I chose buff titanium as an underpainting. It lends a natural warmth to my picture and means when I scratch off the colour, I've got almost the right colour for the mortar between the bricks. I carry on adding blocks of colour to my painting, varying the tones as I go. Sometimes I want them cooler. I'll add a little bit of Van Dyke Brown to my colour and drop those in as well. One swipe is a brick and I don't intend to actually paint every single brick in this wall. The idea is just to put in enough to give you a suggestion. Now let's have a look at perspectives here because, well, when you're standing looking at the, the, the actual doorway, you can see at eye level, this is all running fairly straight. But on my painting, I've made a little bit of a mistake. Yes, I've got into a pickle here. That brickwork goes downhill when it should be running roughly level. As you see, it's an easy fix. I use a baby wipe and just wipe it off. Now here's my homemade marl stick. You've seen this before on other videos. It's just a piece of wood with a hook on the end of it that I can hook around the edge of the canvas then I can use it as a level line. Using the mall stick, I'm able to get the level line right. I'll add a few more little details here and there, and maybe just a few more bricks. I think that's probably enough. I said that's probably enough. Well, once you get started, it's hard to stop. Here's a little more footage of that lovely country house. What beautiful architecture, amazing chimney pots, fabulous. I see another painting project for the future. Or how about this pigeon enjoying a nice dip at a fountain? One of the other things that's helped me to improve my painting no end is some sketching. It doesn't have to be very good or take very long. But a few minutes of this can really help get your eye and your hand coordination perfect. Now here we are six months later and we're deep into autumn. As you can see, beautiful golden leaves on the trees and these ones, well, they'll soon be on the floor. As I turn around, and look off into the distance, you can see the lovely orangey gold colours of the Sussex countryside. So as you see, our little sort of oil sketch is coming along. Um, there are one or two little problems and you saw me making some corrections as I went there. And just as I finished doing this last little piece on the uh, sketch, um, we had an unexpected visit at the house and I was taken away from my painting for a few hours and I didn't have a chance to really stand back and have a good look. But this is the value of doing things like oil sketches that you come back and you've not sort of spent sort of days or weeks in a painting you've only put an hour or two into something and you've just had a quick play with colors and if things aren't quite right it doesn't really matter too much the idea is you're doing some good practice work and the first thing i noticed when i came back and looked at it now is that this line of brickwork here is isn't right is it i mean this one's going slightly up and this one's going slightly level and this is again one of those things you don't always necessarily spot that on the midline to my eye which would be through here in the photograph, everything is running roughly level. If you look at the reference photo of these things are all running roughly level. Below my eye line, these things should all be running slightly uphill. But you see I've got this brickwork in level and it should be slightly down at an angle here. 
and of course above my eye line things should be going downhill. So this looks pretty okay but this clearly isn't quite right. Unfortunately now obviously this has sat overnight and dried but I still got the chance of getting a baby wipe out and having a go and rubbing it out. And lo and behold, there we go. Several hours later, I can still correct my little mistake on this oil sketch. So let's carry on with this and see how far we can get with it. Now let's redo this lovely orange brickwork. Once again, I stand back and then I use this time just a brush to just get the level line right. A few touches of colour and again stand back. I think I might be still slightly too level. I think I might have to, yes, make another small adjustment and drop this down slightly. I've tried to position the reference photograph as closely as I can to the painting so you can sort of see them side by side. It's not exactly perfect because, well, the angle of the camera tends to distort things slightly. Now I'm happy with the brickwork on the right hand side. I think I'll go back and darken a few bricks. I've added a touch more Van Dyke Brown to my colour. By just using a pale wash colour to start with, it's easy to make small adjustments and then go back if we wish to and strengthen things up. Here you see how I'm going to use my mull stick to guide my palette knife as I just scratch on the details of these bricks. Just get it lined up, rest the knife against it and just drag it across the canvas. You get a perfect straight line every time. Obviously for these bricks you can't use a straight line, you just have to freehand it. Once again, it's easy enough to correct. So I'll just do a little at a time and just scratch it around. Now I did get in a bit of a pickle here on the corner because well, the brickwork runs a bit strange. I might have to grow a little bit of foliage over it. You see once again, I'm just checking to make sure I'm roughly level with my brickwork. Those perspectives, if you get them wrong, it throws everything out completely. As you see, I just used my brush this time to get my lines right. Another important line that can throw us off is this one. It's called the threshold. It's the angle at which the doorway meets the ground. And the level of the pathway as it passes through you can see it's almost completely flat. Now, I can almost hear you screaming through the screen at me, but this brickwork doesn't look anything like the reference photograph. And I don't really mind if it doesn't. The one piece of advice I was given many years ago by, by a lovely instructor, and she said, don't get married to the photograph. It is there for reference only. Use it as an inspiration for an idea, but you don't have to marry it, okay? You just have to use it as an idea, as a tool. So I don't worry too much if my brickwork doesn't match. Now, if this was a portrait, I'd have to get a better likeness than this, but it's not a portrait, and no one's gonna see this photograph. The chances are they'll just see the finished painting, and in this case, it's only a sketch. Its value is learning perspectives and angles. I'm going to carry on. We're going to add some of the foliage to this little sketch now. And I'm really rather pleased with how it's coming on. So sit tight and watch the last little bit of this demonstration. My Utilus Thinners is getting a bit grubby, but it's still a nice pale colour, so it won't hurt my painting. I'm going to add just a few drops of Utilus Thinners to this colour. There. 
uh, cadmium yellow this time. But take care, you see, it's actually already quite oily and wet. Too wet for this style of sketching. So dry your brush thoroughly. I'll take away some of that excess oil and add some thinness to it. Just looking at the reference photograph on the left here, and all I'm doing is just washing in some colors. Once again, no detail. I'm just trying to block it in, in sections. Nice block of yellow, maybe a touch more of the Indian yellow, just to sort of darken up, make it look a bit more orangey. And I'll just dab that in over the top of the cadmium yellow. I'm just gonna add a few touches of some dark sienna here and there. Maybe a few sticks and twigs of the little bushes on the other side of the doorway. I keep this as loose as possible. I want it to look like it's sitting further back in my painting. Now, here's a neat little trick for you. Notice I don't paint right up to the edge of the brickwork of the doorway. I deliberately leave a little line of pale unpainted canvas. This is sometimes called a relief line. It helps divide one part of a painting from another by actually doing nothing at all. It's a neat little trick and one you should try with your own work. I've gone into a little bit of cadmium yellow, sap green, a touch of white. I want just to get a few of these really pale looking bright green leaves here. Just dab in a few. You'll notice actually I leave quite a lot of the background canvas grinning through. I chose buff titanium because it's one of those colours that really works with almost any painting. It means that for a sketch you don't have to paint everything. Little bits that are left unpainted just tend to merge in with the rest of the scene. Now, as you see, I'm starting to add some more foliage details, some of the little creepers and vines and ivy growing on the wall. I've added a touch of Prussian blue to my sap green to get a nice dark tone. Keep looking back at your reference photograph. Add a few touches of color and stand back and add a few touches more. This next color is very useful and one I use often. It's a combination of Prussian blue and dark sienna. It makes a sort of neutral grayish tone, either tinted blue or green. The other thing is it takes on other colors and turns them into different shades. Here you see I've mixed a little with some bright red to get a nice brick tone, a nice sort of purplish color. For my pathway, You'll also notice I use it a lot in the foliage when I want to add a shadow without getting a too strong a colour. I think that colour isn't quite right. I'll just wipe it off with a baby wipe and remix it. Slightly paler. More of a wash colour again. There, I think that works better. As the light's going through the doorway, I want to add a shadow on the left hand side of the path. It's a small, sort of small fence there, I think designed to keep people off the grass, but I've not included it in my painting, but I can see the shadow on the ground behind it. I usually leave adding shadows to the last stages of my painting. I've actually got some more of the structure in place. So I'll drop in this one at the top of the archway. I think it needs to be a touch darker. We'll find that as you start adding these shadow lines, your painting becomes sort of slightly stronger and more structured. But sometimes you just need to add a thin wash of colour. So I just used that light grey colour and added a lot more thinner to it and just washed over the brickwork. It's amazing how you can just tone the painting up or down. Now let's add in some of that lovely bright foliage on the right hand side. Now, I'm filming this in real time. I've not sped it up. I want you to see how quickly I just block in some detail here. Just a few dabs of color. Try and keep that lovely energy going through your painting. The minute you sit and start thinking about too much of it, then it starts to become too detailed. Here 
you see I'm using that small brush and just stabbing in some little jewels of colour here. Touches of cad yellow, white, and sap green. Just stab them in. Again, just look at the reference photograph on the left there. Just a few tiny touches and suddenly the painting can really come alive. Sometimes it helps to stand back and squint at your painting through half closed eyes. Notice that big deep shadow to the top right hand side of the archway. I'm using my Prussian blue and dark sienna mixture just to kind of create that lovely deep shadow there. Just a few touches. I'm just looking for the overall shape. I think I'm not far off now. There. Now what about all this lovely sort of overhanging foliage at the top? I think I need to think about doing some of that very soon. I have a question for you. How many of you will be reaching for that liner brush at this stage and getting a bit daunted by the tangle of different stems and stalks to paint? Well, don't have to worry. I'm simply going to use my palette knife again. This little reference photograph lends itself to this technique perfectly. As a bit of luck, I chose it to show you all these different techniques. So there you have it, a little oil sketch based upon a photograph I took six months ago and I finally got round to doing something with it. I hope this little tutorial has been useful for you. It shows how just doing very quick simple little practice pieces, in this case at about an hour or an hour and a half, you can achieve so much. You can do more in that short space of time in terms of learning than you can labouring for days or weeks on a painting. Make sure you give yourself a little bit of time to do this sort of work. It'll help you improve your paintings no end, I can guarantee it. Now, in the meantime, if you've enjoyed watching this, don't forget you can always subscribe to my channel, give this little painting a thumbs up, leave a comment down below and share it through social media. Every time you do that, my channel grows a little bigger and more people get to see it. And if you could do that for me, I thank you very much. In the meantime, happy painting people and get practicing. Who's that having a bath over my shoulder? Henny. Yes, I know, Mr. Booins. Hey, aren't you, Mr. Mooboos? Yes, yes, you lovely boy. Mr. Lovely, Mr. Lovely boy. Yes, you are Mr. Lovely boy. Hehehehe <laughs>